uh, to the cloud, the rest of the connection. Um, while you're talking, when we get to open mic, I will turn off the record option because not everybody wants to be recorded. Um, if you do want to do open mic, you'll be putting uh, your name and let me know via the chat. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Keith. Um, John did ask, can you explain White Rock? So if you don't mind adding that in as you're talking, that would be fantastic. Welcome. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you um, or not see you. I hope you can all see me. From okay. White Rock Hall. Um, which is uh, a church that I moved from its previous resting place where it had, it had been since 1909. And we picked it up and we moved it on top of this mountain. We have it on a 16 acre campus. And we here we have a show that we call Live at White Rock Hall. And in the sanctuary here at the church, we have, um, we bring in nicely known authors, we pair them with regional musicians, and then we film the collaborations live. Uh, you can go to uh, live at whiterockhall.com. There's a website that shows uh, lots of um, performances, uh, video performances, interviews with folks ranging from Patricia Smith and uh, Quincy Troop to Minton Sparks and Bill Root. Uh, an amazing amount of uh, um, poets and really fine Grammy-winning musicians. So I'd love for you to go there and visit that and let me know what you think. Live at whiterockhall.com. And you're sitting with me now um, in our sanctuary at White Rock Hall, which is uh, about uh, roughly 55 minutes northwest of Asheville. Um, I'm going to start with a poem. Uh, this goes out to our Italian brothers and sisters who are having such a horrific time right now trying to get this virus under control. And since we're in the sanctuary of the church here, this poem is appropriately titled, Prayer. Red spruce trees that yield their wood for the violins made in Cremona, Italy, grow in the same valley, including the Stradivarius tables and arms that produce the sweetest sounds known to man. 650 or so instruments worth millions played by students in worship of a tone they cannot reproduce any other way. Single man stands fingering the strings and the dolomites among the reverent limbs of the lovely spruce and he's making a song that the wood can recognize. And the ageless swaying trunks. I am uh, have a, uh, this poem is called uh, Le Papillon. Um, 19th century, most of the footlights were um, lit with phosphorus. They were really, really hot. And uh, they're also sort of created an open flame. Um, and um, lots of times they were so bright because uh, they, they were so hot and they were so bright that uh, the actors that were performing had to go backstage and they found that the way to calm their eyes was, was a light green, sort of a lime green color that they painted the roof. And that uh, uh, subsequently is known as the green room. Uh, uh, forever hence, and as a consequence from now, you know, everybody, when musicians gather or, or actors gather or, or dancers gather, uh, before they go on stage, they gather in the green room. Um, this, uh, this talks about, uh, because the ballerinas would sometimes get too um, close to the footlights, uh, the, because it was an open flame, occasionally they would catch uh, on fire. and um, this poem is about one of the most famous uh, ballerinas uh, and um, who, who got too close to the flame. This is called Le Papillon. This is not the righteous blue flame that engulfs the monk or the sherbet agent of invisible acid dropped by the barrel on the naked children of starving villages in South Vietnam. 
This is not the 80 proof orange vodka cocktail lit by the free basing Richard Pryor, the black adder addled by self-loathing who poured the fire over his head and ran screaming into the void. This is not the match stripe under the cooking spoonful any more than it is the convulsive propulsion shivering into massive tendrils that annihilate the bloated Hindenburg in an avalanche of star-like implosions, a fire that blotted out a flying cathedral between its fingers. No. This is the personal and public incineration snapping its jaws shut around the most delicate, jubilant wing. This is the interrupted, gravity-free white lance that burns straight through the curtain, the laser emitted by a magnifying glass as it focuses a ray of the sun on an unsuspecting dragonfly, the wisp of smoke, almost a held breath of frost let slowly out, then the shards, red and jagged, slicing through the tutu's layers and igniting them, delicate as tissue paper, sticking to the ballerina's hips as she twisted away from the guilty footlights. And swarmed into the backstage, a thousand ingots of red and lavender knives exploding around her supple hands and shoulders, a galaxy of bees hiving her, a flare, a comet, and finally, a nest of ash hoping to hold together in the wind. I had a dream once that I saw, um, I dreamed that Louis Armstrong and Howlin' Wolf were on the same stage together. And um, I looked on um, YouTube because of course, if, um, if, it does, if it's not on YouTube, then it doesn't exist. Uh, but there's no uh, memory or uh, any sort of uh, memoir of Louis Armstrong and the Wolf being on the same stage together. But um, I wrote a poem about it. And um, so at least it existed in my dream. Now it exists, it exists in this book. Uh, this is called Louis and the Wolf. I thought I'd get it started by singing a little blues, if that's all right. And um, this is an old Howlin' Wolf song. Whoa, I asked the girl for water. Oh, she gave me gasoline. the tablets one more I damn near ever see I have come to wonder if Louis Armstrong and Howlin' Wolf ever met. What a sight that would be. A grand summit meeting complete with growling Wolf licking his harp, and Satchmo grinning away, deftly fingering his horn in an effort to curtail the sonic boom of the two most powerful voices ever gathered in the walls of a single room. Snarling and stalking that elegant whisper, I imagine Wolf laying tracks and Louis so remarkably dignified, so clearly in the furrows of the groove, prowling the stage like the shadow of a storm cloud while Wolf raged and bit down on the low cord changes like a chainsaw blade, a ragged sound refined by the shimmering honey of the Great Dipper's rising horn so perfectly above the fray. Howling would get down on all fours, writhing on the stage, 
and King Louis with his hatchet flying like a flag on a mahogany galleon, hurtling across the choppy sea's wake. Wolf bursting with a delta moan and the evil ways of a tail dragon of Satan. Hoy, oh, hoy, oh, I'm your boy. 300 pounds of heavenly joy. Oh, 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 oh 300 pounds. He would forsake his mother's hysteria, earning her undying neglect for doubting his gospel church upbringing right up to his final deathbed when he asked for his mother, please, mama, I'm dying. Please come. She did not. And named for a president, Chester Arthur Burnett was born under a bad sign. Haley's comet burning across the sky like a brakeman's lantern. But a blues man will survive, staring straight into the sun like a rifle with eyes. An old Satch would know, his thunder cussive purr emerging from the earth like a fountain of pent up feeling, meticulous in its placement as it repeatedly echoed the punch of the brass lines and the cymbal set to ride. His cornet weathered every swinging era. Birds, heebie-jeebies, and the big band's muskrat rambles, always sailing, seldom misbehaving, not since the rancid Storyville days, when the small eight-year-old boy from the colored waves neck and blew his body peppered with blows until the bent boy escaped via the Mississippi on a light-littered steamboat its giant wheel, just the juju and propulsion needed to heal the nuance of a genius whose rules are its own, and whose last quiet notes with the crowd so still you could hear a rat pissing on cotton on the walls. The gleaming corner of a note set to crackle, piercing the racial gloom of the American heart like buckshot. His trumpet bell uplifted and ringing and though the rain may ooze and lovers lose their feeling, the moon melt down in the poisoned heavens. There will be a sound overwhelming all others, a horn poised flaming in our imagination. Though the earth be smothered and fire rise a final time inside the webbing of our skin, with the shock of recognition, recognition both bound in worship like Louis and the wolf, whose dream meeting probably never took place, though my mind cannot erase the wish of it, the sheer bliss and pitch and rich opposition that the scene presents a listening like I have never experienced. Be grinding until the wounds are wound together. The great child's feathers, arm in arm, as they rise and sing into the gulps, fearsome, swelter. This poem is a, uh, sometimes we create by omission. Sometimes we're able to create sometimes by neglect. Uh, this has a Latin title called Et in Arcadia Ego, which means the spirit. When the trees bow, and bushes curtsy, as the silk wind brushes through my bramble cluttered garden, the claws of the field mice and piston powered rabbits scramble the unbroken dirt. The untended roses groan under the weight of their thorns. The untethered tomato vines sprawl and dump their fire reds among the robust weeds. At one corner, Japanese hornets have assembled a gray colony the size of a watermelon. 
and they ward off semi-serious excursions to pluck a renegade bud or puckered potato already on the verge of rot. Toxic black walnut tree stands sentinel at the leaning gate, dropping its dark grenades into the field's jumbled stalks. Who quarrel over which one should command this wasted circle first. My neglect. With all the bad news happening right now, um, all of us being forced in so many ways to change our lives, and our lives will be utterly changed in the aftermath of this event. Our culture changed. Um, but one thing that cannot change is our hold on one another. And we find that many times that when people are forced into unbelievable circumstances, that the force of compa compassion, of our imaginations, are the things that bind us together. This is called the force of compassion. Sit with things and listen long. And the singing will begin. Turn your free fall into a voluntary act. The song shattered. Every being takes its piece of the harmony. The well of the past is bottomless. And in the walls, the song climbs out of the nets and jewels of time. The song of our DNA, our tribal connection the infinite unraveling mingled with bitter intervals of radiance, well water, lotus heart, rising crane. There is a, um, in Tryon, one of our most famous um, artists, is uh, uh, born in Tryon, not too far from here. Um, one of the most fantastic creators uh, ever. Um, and um, an amazing singer, but also an amazing uh, piano player. And uh, I'm gonna do this, which should be my last poem. Um, and if you guys are interested in any of this, uh, please uh, go to the, Again, of meaning, um, um, skin of meaning is uh, April the fourteenth, but you can order it now, and you can also go to live at whiterockhall .com, and the poem that I am getting ready to perform for you um, is called "Look for Me in Liberia." It's in the voice of Nina Simone. And there is a performance of it uh, that you can see for free on the livecall.com website. Um, and I'll be accompanied by a piano and a violin. Um, but for now, you'll just have to uh, put up with my voice. I'm gonna sing a little piece of blues to get us into the poem. And um, then hopefully you'll be uh, able to feel the intimacy of Nina Simone's voice. This is um, by the great Sun House. I'm people grinning in your face. Look, don't get in, in your face. And just a bear Ooh, is in mine. A good friend is hard to find. So don't you mind when people grinning in your face. You knew your brothers and your sisters too. 
And Lord, when you're in doubt, oh, they're going to throw you down. So don't you mind people grinning in your face. Oh, don't you mind people grinning in your face. And just a bear ooh, is in mind. It's hard to find. So don't you mind people grinning in your face. What may come when I sing? Sometimes my voice is gravel. Sometimes it's coffee and cream, but I splintered and jested and braced the bar. I changed keys right in the middle. Where do I belong? Wherever the edge is, free from fear. All power is black. In our, in our apartment, the ebony squirrels on the terrace, we ain't made friends with them yet. And this velvet wallpaper makes the bathroom feel more blue. I've got diamonds pasted on my eyelids and my eyebrows and on the sweet balcony of my face. Because you see, the fugue and the counterpoint makes a high priest's soul sound sophisticated. And if they can't learn to listen, I'll quit. Fuck it. I got some dumbass bitch in this audience and she's sweating me and she's heckling and I have to let her know that I have swallowed the storm and I'll not be rode. I'm a freight train and I tell the track where to go. She beat me all the way home, all the way home. Nobody's seen me for two weeks all the way in the elevator, up the stairs, she beat me, slammed me into a concrete wall. He tells me, I want to be hit, he says. I need it. I need the scars, he says. Everybody knows about Mississippi. Children's brains scattered in the sanctuary. Birmingham and the bull, they got me so upset. There are bombs in my brain, Selma in my nightgown. Daddy says I'm sidetracked by Mississippi. And there's strange fruit hanging from the southern trees. And there's fire hoses up, opened up. And the backlash is the leather on this southern breeze. Backlash, says Stokely Carmichael. He's squeezing. I'm bathing in Bloody Mary's. I'm addled. And I leave them with the blues. In the North Carolina backwoods or the cold ass Carnegie Hall or Mississippi. God damn Mississippi. I have to exist here in the United Snakes of America. But I want to shake these people free of their elegant smugness. I want to drive their shriveled hips insane. And there's 18,000 students at the University of Massachusetts, and there's 300 painted black. And I've quit singing for anybody else. I want these children to see. I want to see them burn. I want to see them curious about themselves. I want to sing a dagger into the sick center of the American soul. I want to cut the twisted tail off of the world's largest hog. And I don't know if I can go on because I'm already a ghost. And the wailing has descended, I'm made up of backbone how. Thank you. Damn.
<laughs> I'm unmuting everybody. Wow. All y'all are unmuted. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. That was intriguing. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Beautiful. Wow. Awesome, guys. That was amazing. So I, appreciate, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks. We've got a Thanks. lot of questions popping up and some comments that I'll run through. Um, I'll start with uh, Kate. I love your comment. You said, I've heard enough to know I will be ordering the book post haste. I think you should know that was just a few minutes into your reading. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. I appreciate it. Thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, she also added thanks from down here in Florida. We needed that one. I think that was Force of Compassion. Uh, Jean also wrote Force of Compassion is a great meditation for now. Um, uh, John wanted to know if you ever saw Nina perform. Um, she was a little bit before my time. Um, I was born in 1962. Um, um, I've never saw her perform live. Um, I've seen uh, filmed performances of, of Nina though live, and she's one of the most electri electrifying performers I've ever seen. Um, her ability to somehow um, be so technically proficient and yet so authentic at the same time is really unusual in a performer. Um, and I think that's what makes her the uh, uh, Empress of Soul, Jazz and Soul, the Empress. Uh, that's perfect. Um, Kate, I just noticed that you wrote that both your husband and you are sick, and so I just wanted to acknowledge that we're all sending you and your husband um, healing thoughts. I'm glad that you came to the reading. That's awesome. I've muted everybody else, so if you have a question, guys, you're going to have to put it into the chat. Who I have for... Uh, Hey, Alex, I just saw Alex Grant is here. That's awesome. Um, if you want to read, I so far have Paul, Christy, John, and Susanna. If I have missed someone, please say your name now. Does anybody have another question for Keith? Oh, there's five new messages. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So from Dana, great. Hello from 615. Happy to hear a voice from the 615 band. Love a servant of blues with my poems. Hope you'll be at Southern Festival of Books. That's from Dana. Um, I'm talking to Serenity, and um, um, I've I've been at the uh, Southern Festival of Books in Nashville, where they used to have it in the Capitol Building. The, the library there is amazing, full of mahogany and burled cherry, um, and I love that room. Um, and uh, most likely, I will be there uh, in October. That's awesome. Um, let's, Kate said that they are on the upswing. We're really glad to hear that. Leslie said, thanks, Keith. Great to hear you read and wail. Having streaming and sound issues here. My hubs is WFH and needs the bandwidth to do his work. Um, she said, take care, stay safe and well, everybody. Glad you were here, Leslie. Um, Alex wrote, great job, Keith. You're always a force of nature. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else wrote, thanks so much. Was listening to Nina today on my iPod. Um, there's a question. In the Nina Simone poem, do any of your lines reference any particular song lyrics of hers? Um, there, there are a handful of um, poems that do echo uh, lyrics from some of her compositions um, uh, that Nina wrote. Um, there's a documentary called What Happened, Miss Simone? Um, and they do some reading from some of uh, Nina's letters there, and I've read some of her letters also, uh, particularly between her and Sophie Carmichael and some other folks from the uh, civil rights era. Um, and um, I think those are, uh, I, I, there's a poet named I, AI, and when I was in college, um, one of the things that I think is most interesting about her is she writes in essentially dramatic monologues and in the first person. And um, some poems, it feels like to me that uh, the only way you can get the true authenticity from it is to speak in that first person voice. Um, um, and I felt like that I really sensed what was happening um, with what Nina was trying to uh, explain in her music. And uh, that's why I decided to do it in first person. 
Um, and um, also um, language, you know, poetry is language with a shape. And so uh, many times it's important that um, you figure out how to shape a poem, not only sonically, and the sonic architecture, um, but um, the musical uh, line breaks and how you use the negative space on the page. You heard me talk a minute ago about um, Louis Armstrong talking about silence. And the white space on the page should be looked at as silence and silence in the reading. And Louis said that he wanted the audience to be so silent that you could hear a rat on the wall, in the walls, pissing on cotton. And um, that's <laughs> really important to try to find a way to uh, include that in your work. Um, it's very powerful and it lands a great deal of weight to a composition, in my opinion. Awesome. Thanks, Keith. I'm trying to keep up. Do I have any more questions? I think I think that's the it, end of it. So we're going to turn to open mic. Thank you so much, Keith, for doing this. And I will take you off spotlight video. Right. And um, the first person I have up is Paul. So let me find you, Paul, if you can unmute. And then also um, let's do video if you don't mind. Paul, can you hear me? I've got you unmuted. I'm unmuted and- uh, Yep, and here comes your video. I hope you do nice background. Uh, probably have one. Um, <laughs> there we go. But, uh, we're gonna move, oh, not to there. <laughs> there. Okay. Um, this is a poem that showed up in uh, Snapdragon a little while ago called Against Desirelessness. The heart needs more than quiet, more than a home without desire. Sorry, old masters, before I can let go, want I need to be holding on, refusing to let something loose. In my fist, I hold the aroma of spring, of roses, of mown grass. In my ear, I can still hear the creek and the wren's song turn to skull as the snake comes down the tree from her emptied nest, the touch of the breeze as I open my palm. Ooh, awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm, great. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, the next person I have listed is Christy. And Christy, I'm trying to remember if you have video that can work. If you do, I'm unmuting you now. Wait, there we go. And um, when you see uh, start video, you can go ahead and push that and then we'll be able to see you as well. Okay, here we Yay, go. You did it. Good job. <laughs> this one is short. It's called Insomnia. When chaos rattles every crevice and cranny of the mind's eye like scattered rooms. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I unmuted everybody so we can clap. That's, it's a little bit hard sometimes, but that should have gotten everybody unmuted. Um, our next reader is John. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> there we go, John. Um, I'm gonna ask you to start your video. And when you see that, if you could go ahead and start your video, that'd be fantastic. Oh, for some reason, um, my video is not starting. Yeah, I was going to say, I've asked you to start it a couple times, so oh, it doesn't. There you go. I think your remark kind of blocked. There you go. Um, I'm, I'm John Stickney. I'm originally from the Cleveland, Ohio area. I've been down in North Carolina about four years. So just by way of introduction. Running the path at the Brunswick ah. Forest Dog Park. It's early. The sun's up, but the heat's still down. I plod along, running with a 25 pound internalized running with a 25 pound strapped inside my middle. Turkey vultures sensing a potential payday circle above. 
then alight in the forest trees along the border and wait, betting on time. Around me, the morning 